What's up guys? I'm Nick and this is Build Dad Build. And today we're checking out the F1. Not the ultra popular racing franchise. We're checking out this little dude right here. Isn't he cute? Look at him, he's so cute. Don't you just wanna tickle him under his chin? No, I hate myself already. Hey, and just so we're clear, this episode isn't gonna have any porn in it. That's a porn over there! Oh! Oh! Oh. So Exo is calling this the fastest portable IR and diode laser. It has a 10 watt blue diode laser in it as well as a 2 watt IR laser. 1064 watt, 1064 nanometer dookie bubble thing. What I'm talking about, it's like the other IR laser that was on the, at the D1. So this thing can engrave pretty much anything that a diode laser can engrave, as well as metal, like jewelry and things like that. It'll do these little metal business cards super fast, and it can cut up to eight millimeter wood and five millimeter acrylic. Today, we're gonna try a couple of different things. First, I wanna try to engrave on this, because this is so tiny, man. And I wanna see if we can get a decent engrave on the edges of this. So I'm gonna pop this off the chain, cause it's off the chain, baby! And we're just gonna see if we can get this little guy set up in the laser. Not porn. I apologize, I, I don't know how to screen record on this computer. So just so you guys can get an idea, what I've done is I took a pair of calipers and I measured that piece of jewelry and I made a rectangle of that. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit the frame over to the machine and then we're gonna go line up the machine. Now set, on, set up on this did take some tweaking because basically what I did is I screwed this down and then I moved the frame around until I got it to where it was gonna butt up against here. But if you're doing this at a trade show and you were just gonna be doing these, then you just have to get it set up once and then it makes it repeatable. So I can just put this in there right now and it's ready to go. Now in XCS, it does give you the ability to ignore a layer except when I have it hooked up to the F1. I don't know why that is. So basically what I've just done with this outside layer to keep my frame where it is, is I put the power down to 1% and I put the speed all the way up. So it'll just run it real quick. It won't actually engrave any. What I did is I've, I've centered this. So basically you can just kind of bring this in here and center it with the centering lines. In order to focus the machine, you're just gonna focus right here. You're gonna move this up and down. And basically you've got two lights there. You can see you've got a blue light and a red light. red light. You're gonna move this until they line up together and they turn purple. I have to get my readers on to see this. Cause I'm old. All right, so. Here we go. All right, and you press the focus button to start the engrave. So for those of you that don't know, my wife and I have twins. So she went in the necklace and said, mommy has my daughter's name, my son's name, and then their birthday on it. So this is her new necklace. Pretty slick, huh? Next up, we're gonna do something we never do on this channel. I'm gonna engrave my logo on something. And what I need, and my wife will attest to this, is another whiskey glass. Now, as you guys know, a diode laser cannot mark glass but it came with a marking agent. And I'm using Charcoal Glass by Enduramark. If you go to their website, it does say that they do not guarantee that this will work with a diode laser. I haven't had any issue with it. Now, I've only done it on the 20 watt. Uh, I did some tests on the 10 watt, but the tests on the 10 watt seem like they're, seem like they're holding. So I am saying that it works on a diode. <laughs> but I guess you can't, I guess they can't guarantee it. I, they haven't done enough testing to guarantee that it's gonna stay on there forever, I guess is the whole thing. Let's do this. Stuff is super easy to use. You just do one coat this way. You're gonna go even. And then one up and down. That's it. And this stuff dries in like, it's probably already dry. And what I'm doing is I'm using that frame to line my glass up and figure out where I want it to go. All right, so just so we're clear, you can't do more than about a two inch image without having to put it in a rotary. But the way the Galvo travels, you can actually do a bit of a curved surface. So that's what we look like before we clean it up. Let me uh, go wash it off real quick and I will be right back with the result. What's up guys? <laughs> 
It's the kind of weird stuff I do when the laser's running because I can't, can't really leave. I don't have another project right now, so. <laughs> All right, like third time's a charm, I think. We're still getting a little fall off on the edges, so we might, I, I, I'm trying to tweak settings here and we either need to slow it down a little bit or maybe the image is just too wide for the gavel to handle without using a rotary, but as you can see, there's been multiple, multiple tests. Okay, can we say sixth times a charm? I can't even say it. Sixth times a charm. Check that out. So as you can see, we have a different glass going on here. And the reason being is because, as you can see, here's four tries that didn't go so well. One on the back where I just used too much product, which that'll cause the stuff to kind of chip off like that because it doesn't actually, it doesn't cook it onto the glass. It just burns it and kind of lets it peel up. But yeah, so this was, so this guy, and I think this is actually kind of a pretty interesting example because not only is this glass round, but it's also convex, concave, whichever one that is, I can never remember. So it had to work with different surface, different surface angles and it did it pretty well. So the last iteration, the one that worked, the sixth one was three minutes, 53 seconds, so like four minutes. We ran that at 100% power, 100% speed, 180 lines per centimeter. So pretty impressive result for that, especially four minutes, dude. I wouldn't just be trying to come off numbers out of my head, but I haven't been able to make speed and power grids for this machine yet, and my other ones don't work in here right. So I'm just kind of going based on, on past knowledge. 100% speed, 100% power may not be optimal for that, just FYI, but it did yield a good result and it only took four minutes, so I'll take it. So the next thing I wanna attempt is this guy right here. This is a family emergency card and I have this in my wallet for a while and as you can see, it's just kind of rubbing off and this is, I did this on a CO2 laser, so I wanna see if it'll do it any better with the IR. A family emergency card, which I actually ended up, uh, ended up doing in red. At the end, I just figured it stuck out in your wall a little bit better. And I'm not sure what happened right here. I don't know if you can see that D. We didn't get all the D, man. So I had to run it again. And then just to show off that it can do both at once, I went ahead and engraved on this acrylic with the IR, and then I cut it out with the blue dia. And honestly, I had it open just so you guys could see it better on camera. It smells a little bit like acrylic in here, but that fan, that exhaust fan, sucked that out pretty good. I think this one took the longest, and the cut is a two millimeter per second cut. So, like that, it ran in right under five minutes. I'm looking at it's like four, oh, I'm sorry, 423. So all of these projects ran about the same amount of time, aside from the, the emergency carb, which is super fast. But yeah, man, it's a powerful little thing. And if you're watching this video at the time I made it, they're running a sale over on Xtool's website that if you order the Xtool F1 RA2 Pro and Smoke Purifier or the P2 and the F1 bundle, you get the free slide extension, which I think just dropped a day or two ago. I don't even have it yet, but it makes your bed on the F1 like four times as wide. And if you're interested in picking up an F1 for yourself, I will link that down below. Now, until next time, Zim Zim, Bala Bim! Whoop!